Welcome to Financial Friday. Yay! Although weekends don't mean much to me, Lynn's days off are Wednesday and Thursday. Anyway, today let's get into the numbers. I've gotten John and Floor's budget and I will compare it to our budget uh, last year, uh, but how are they doing it on their budget? That's the big question. At the end, I will include a quick little summary of where this week's uh, currencies are sitting. The markets haven't quite closed yet, but the ticker is already running. Pay it forward. That's what Lynn and I are all about. So please like, subscribe, and comment. Let's get right into it. So what are the differences between John and Flora's budget and our budget? But I'm going to get into ours first because I think it's a little bit more valid for most of you who will have to have a little extra cash to start with. Okay, so our budget, as we've mentioned numerous times, is 60,000 pesos a month. And the other day I mentioned about big numbers and how they don't make sense against the dollar, the euro, and the pound. So 60,000 pesos is 720,000 pesos a year. It's not a lot of money, right? I mean, there's a reason why we're moving from our Western countries and going to the Philippines is to get better buying power. So that means that we're, you know, for some people that might mean that your, your difference between your country and the Philippines might be say 40 cents on the dollar or 30 cents on the dollar on your buying power for your basic essentials. I don't mean cars and stuff like that because in the Philippines, the transit system is great as far as I'm concerned. And each individual island is quite small. So, you know, but let's get into that. So that's 720,000 pesos. I will include little tickers down at the bottom here for each individual country. But in that 720,000, what I'm assuming is that you in your native country have an extra buffer of about 20% on your pension that you don't need to send that money. So in the beginning, you may end up blowing all your money on furnishing your condo, okay? So that may mean that you're having to live real time for a while. So let's let's dive into it at 60,000 pesos living real time. And assuming that you've got tw that 20% buffer. So you're living real time, you're gonna see peaks and valleys as you go through and and Sometimes it's going to dip below what I think those thresholds are that set your budget in place. Okay. When it dips below, you're going to have to take from your savings. Now that 20%, if you're leaving that in your host country or your native country, and when the currencies are good, you're sending it, you're saving it. And now there's your buffer as you go through. And when it's lean, yeah, you're not getting the same buying power, but then you've got that savings to work with, right? So think of it in that context. Now, that 20%, let's assume that you have to supplement your rent with 45,000 pesos. That 20% should, with all currencies, amount to about 145,000 pesos a year. So that sounds like a lot. Again, it's not. Remember, it's 720,000 pesos a year to be able to live on 60,000 pesos a month. So your goal in the next five years is to have periods where you might have to supplement your rent because you're not going to get a good exchange rate. And then anything that goes above the threshold, you're saving. But let's assume that through that whole period, you're able to save 100,000 pesos a year. You need about five years, okay? In a savings account that you try never to go below that 100,000 pesos a year of savings. So that should net you about a half a million pesos in five years. You're gonna need that because the economies will change. Your pension might not keep up to the inflation, all of that type of thing. You need that buffer going forward and always, always mentioning the hospitalization and 
clinical care that you may need later in life. Hopefully it doesn't happen early. But let's get into the numbers with John and Floor, because John has no pension. <laughs> so he's having to live there, make money there, and survive there making pesos, not dollars, not pounds, not euros. In his case, it would be euros. But let's dive into his numbers. So what he sent me was, and I'm rounding out the rent a little bit, guys, because if your rent could easily be more than his, he's had time there to figure out where the ideal rents are for him. And we've taken over the top floor of a building and our rents are 5,000 pesos, but those rents just went up. Now, they're holding those rents for us because we still have in good standing contracts. Okay. So even though our contracts have expired, but you know what I mean, it, it, it's, it's ongoing. So the rent, rents haven't gone up. Loyalty, I guess. Um, so I'm building in a little bit of buffer here, but rent, electrical, water, 10,000 pesos a month. Wi-Fi, it cost John 1,500 pesos for his fiber optic internet. Okay, please keep in mind that I do not suggest you do that until you are locked in on a place that you plan to stay there for a minimum of a year because they are really hard on the contracts. Okay, so if you think you can just sort of ditch or run and move to another place and then reapply, it don't work that way. They're pretty ruthless. So I suggest that you get a Wi-Fi SIM. You can get them from Smart and Globe. I'm not sure who else, maybe Dito now. Um, but you gotta put it in slot one on your phone and that will make sure that the video side of things is running smoothly. SIM two, you can get your talk and text and there'll be a little bit of data with that that you could use at the mall or whatever. But try and save that Wi-Fi for when you're at home. Because it's in your phone, you can hotspot to your computer or your tablet. And this is why I suggest that you do not buy one of those pocket Wi-Fi's. They do tend to lag a lot, guys, and I don't like them. So let's redo the numbers here. 10,000 for rent, electric, and water. Remember, air conditioning is only running two to three hours a night just to cool the room down. Your Wi-Fi SIM is going to cost you about 1,000 pesos a month. Your talking text is going to cost you about 500 pesos a month, give or take. There's always deals that are happening. Now, in the wet market, where you're going to get your fish, because that's normally brought in fresh to the market, we do not ever buy fish in the, in the grocery store. It's usually older fish. So fruits, vegetables, fish, and all of that other stuff, like scouring pads for the dishes and you know all that stuff that you can get at the wet market. Their budget is 8,000 pesos. The grocery store, where you gotta get your toilet paper and all of that other kind of stuff, plus your ground meats like your porks. Most Westerners seem to prefer to get their pork from the grocery store because it's constantly kept cold, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in the case of uh, chicken, that's kind of a wild card. It depends on your wet market. So I'm including that chicken in, in the grocery store side here because the chicken isn't so great in, in our wet market. So all of that budget comes out to 16,000 pesos. So the total budget there turned out to be 36.5. But John will tell you, it, it ends up being 40 in the month. There's always this or that or whatever. Now, please keep in mind on his 40,000 peso budget that he has to earn all of that money. He has no money for transportation, but everything that he has is walking distance anyway. So, you know, that 3,000 or yeah, uh, 3,500, you know, might be a rainy day Jeep uh, or trike ride. John doesn't do too many, too many Jeeps. <laughs> He's a big boy. Um, so that's kind of the context between the two budgets. And if you haven't caught up on any of our other videos, in Len and I's budget, we budget 30,000 pesos for everything that we need for the house side of things and 1,000 pesos per day, so 30,000 a month for all the other stuff. 
Now, when we reran our numbers, we will probably, if we were staying in Angles, probably have to move that up to probably about 75,000 or 70,000 pesos. And the reason being is that Lynn was flying every, uh, you know, six weeks roughly back to Cebu to be with her family. No hotel on that side, but just a flight. So, but that's over and above. You guys wouldn't run into that stuff generally. So, but again, you know, I like my movies. So I do my movies probably three, four times a week. Uh, gets me out of the heat. Um, and then we generally will have a coffee or a light lunch or a really early light dinner uh, before going home. And then after we get home, we might have a snack. So, and that probably happens about five times a week that we eat out. It's not a heavy eat out, but we do eat out. So that's what we budget. Now, before in that 60,000 pesos a month, that also included... Uh, a trip to Subic Bay where we could, you know, get on a V hire and go out as a group and then we would, you know, buy a lunch there or whatever. So in those kind of cases, of course, you know, if we wanted to go on Wednesday, then on Saturday, Saturday uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we were, we're saving all of that money so we can take that trip. Okay. All right. So here we go. The markets are closed. Let's have a look and see what happened. Okay, so actually it's Tuesday, but the reason it's Tuesday is after Friday last week, I said, be careful about hedging, speculating, all of that type of thing. Be careful because look at what happened today. It pulled back roughly half a peso at that particular moment. Now, again, I want to drive home that I do this on Fridays on purpose because you need to do your sending before the market opens on Monday in Japan and Australia. Anything, any big announcements, any big events or whatever that might happen on the weekend can quickly happen when those markets open up. Okay, so be careful of that. Now, here's a chart of the US dollar. Okay, I've deliberately cut off what's happened in the last week, but you can see it's straight up. And so all the speculators are going, it's going to go forever. <laughs> That's not how the market works. So here's what happened before last weekend. There was a double top. Okay, you can see that. Now, a triple crown is a little bit more powerful, indicating it's going to go down. You can have a triple bottom. It should go up. Tools, right? These are just tools. And i got to X that out. Okay, X that out too. Okay, so you can see the trend line there matched up to that double crown. Now, again, to me as a former trader, I dabble in it a little bit still. These are indicators that I'm not going to trade this currency. There's too much roughness going on right now. I'm not going to trade it. So then we can see by the blue line, that was last Friday. I told you guys, be careful now. It's pulling back. So send your money now, get your good money. It's still good money. It's still well above the threshold. <laughs> Take your money and run, okay? Never look at where it could have been, would have, could have, should have, is, doesn't matter. Take it, take your profit, okay? The blue line is what happened last weekend. You can see what happened to the market. As soon as the market opened on Monday, boom, it pulled down. And then on Tuesday, Boom, it pulled down even more. So today is Tuesday. Let's see what happened by Friday. Right now. Ooh, it's hot. But really quick. Euro US. Nothing happened. Okay, so it's stagnant. Why did the pay so strengthen? 25 year highs. Looking at the month, double top. Again, a lot of resistance. Marcos gave his address to the nation. That caused strengthening. Boom, it came down. Let's set the threshold. Let's set our budget. Save above the budget for the lean times when the currencies aren't with you. That's why we're here. Okay. Later, Gators.